WWE sale is uh, well, it's not sale. It's a the done merger. deal. The, the merger. merger. TKO. The merger. the merger went through Tuesday, and uh, a lot of media um, by Nick Khan and, and uh, Lawrence Epstein from UFC and uh, some by Ari Emanuel and Mark Shapiro. So, um, I mean, nothing, I would say, earth-shaking um, as far as, I mean, obviously we knew that the, the, the thing we've known for since April that this thing's going to happen, um, but it's now official. They're now TKO in the stock market. WWE in the stock market no longer exists. Um, the UFC part of Endeavor is no longer part of the Endeavor stock any longer. Um, and, uh, you know, they got the new company. And, um, I mean, there's there's a lot of, you know, I mean, obviously, there is a lot of talk about, um, you know, what's going to happen with WWE. Um, we've talked about this before, um, but obviously, I lived through the uh, UFC thing in 2016 when Endeavor bought them. And as far as the, the product, you know, I mean, there was no real great difference in the product, I didn't think. But behind the scenes, you know, I mean, there were all kinds of people I knew at UFC that, that were gone. Um, and people who helped build that company were gone. And um, others, you know, left. And, you know, obviously um, people who were supposed to have lifetime jobs there no longer were, were then let go. Um, I mean, there's a lot of bloodletting. And, um, you know, it's, at one point the employees were told, okay, that's it, no more cuts. And then there were more cuts. So what I would say is... is um, for employees who are probably nervous as hell. Not not necessarily. T I don't think the. I don't think that any main wrestlers are getting cut. Put it this way. I mean, I don't know that, but like in UFC, it's not like they cut any main fighters. Although they did allow fighters that they thought were past their prime to go to Bellator, you know, without trying to bid to keep them. Um, and and in and in some cases PFL as well. When people got big offers from outside. Um, they did not jump to keep them because they wanted to keep the salary structure low. And also they had the, uh, the lawsuit. So it actually was to their benefit to um, have people leave to go to other companies to make it look like they weren't dominating the marketplace. And, you know, like some of the people that were past their prime still had names, but they, you know, were no longer going to be um, competitive against the top people. Uh, they didn't fight hard to keep them. You know, of course, and, and UFC is a very different animal than, than WWE when it comes to older talent because, um, you know, older talent in pro wrestling can still be marketable as long as they can talk and as long as you push them. Um, you know, whereas in fighting, I mean, you have to be able to beat guys in fights. Um, there was, you know, some talk of the idea, you know, that some guys, not everyone, obviously, but some people with good personalities in UFC who may be past their fighting prime could then go to WWE. And, I mean, it, of course it's possible, but with WWE, so much of what they're trying to do is get guys in their early 20s, so you know, um, and, and college athletes as opposed to, um, I mean, look, if Conor McGregor want to do it, but Conor McGregor's got so much money, you know, he's not going to do WWE except for like a one-shot thing. Um, you know, the, you know, every now and then there might be like a Matt Riddle, you know, or, or a Tom Lawler for that matter, you know, a guy who did, uh, UFC for a while and then got into pro wrestling, who always wanted to be in pro wrestling, you know, at other points. So like, you know, those guys that, that could happen. Um, but I don't see too many, like, like, a you know, I don't think that that's going to be like a regular thing because there's people going, like, oh, it's going to be like Anoki in this, and it's not going to be. Um, Lawrence Epstein, I mean, they're going to obviously cross market um, each product. Um, there's talk about different types of uh, working together on international things. Nick Khan brought up the idea of perhaps doing like a, a you know, having a city pay for. You know, you know, whether it's domestic or international, pay for the idea of getting a SmackDown on Friday, a UFC pay-per-view on a Saturday, and then a WWE pay-per-view on a Sunday. Or the idea of marketing um, when there's an international show, whether it's an international show from WWE or an international show from, from uh, uh, UFC, with the idea that like the international show could go in the afternoon and the WWE show would go at night. So you would have like an, an all-day thing which we seem to i feel like we have those already 
but this would be like more in control and um you know and they won't do i mean they're not going to do pay-per-views head-to-head on the same day which has been done um that one probably will not happen um Lawrence Epstein said the goal was to make every WWE fan a UFC fan and make every UFC fan a WWE fan. And Dana White said that was the stupidest thing he'd ever heard. Um, You know, and Lawrence is like his, you know, I mean, they work together. He goes, I love you, Lawrence, but that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And I hope you were misquoted. Well, it's a pretty stupid statement because it's not going to happen. Well, we all know it's not going to happen. But but the idea of cross-marketing, you know, I mean, they're going to do that. And there is a crossover. You know, it's not. There is a crossover. There's a crossover. There's not like a gigantic crossover. Not now there isn't. There, I there, think there was a gigantic crossover when Brock Lesnar was, was fighting in UFC, and a yeah. lot of wrestling fans paid to see CM Punk fight in the UFC. But, yeah. you know, once once Brock left, I mean, you could see. And, uh, you know, today, and I think the bigger thing is like, you know, I think that WWE fans are willing to watch MMA uh, shows and UFC shows if there's someone they perceive as a big star having a big fight. Like Connor but, or something. Sure, John but as far as, like, you know, MMA fans, I mean, I know a lot of people that are MMA fans, and they will have nothing to do with pro wrestling. They think it's stupid. They think it's fake. I mean... Yeah, but that's... That, you know, that's you know, just... But, it's, it's far fewer MMA fans, I think you're going to convert to just becoming regular WWE viewers. It'd be tough because they're not looking. They're not necessarily looking for that. Um, you know, I mean, I used to have the actual stats and stuff, and the crossover. You know, I mean, there there was a point where the crossover was very, very big. Now it's hard to get the stats because you know UFC's. You know, all of their stats are would be ESPN Plus, and and um, you know they're very you know pretty much impossible to get. Plus, I don't even think UFC knows anymore. They did know what it, what it was, and um, you know the. Um, I mean, it's just, um, I know that, that the, uh, obviously the crossover of, of uh, WWE to UFC is much, much, much higher than WWE to boxing. And the crossover of WWE with AEW when it comes to pay-per-view was similar to the past when I got the numbers, when you would have, say, a, a John Jones fight or a, or a Connor fight or, or a Ronda fight, you know, it, you know in, in some cases actually bigger for the UFC. When it was a real big show, but um, but you know, I mean, even 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 at the biggest, I mean, Lesnar was huge, but even even at the biggest, you know, you're talking probably you know twelve percent, you know, six to twelve percent in that range for for a big fight and a little and less for um, you know, less for uh, a, a minor like a, a lesser pay per view, I would say. TV, nobody knows. There's there probably is some crossover though, um, but I mean, you know, a percentage, but what that percentage is. Um, I don't know what it is. There might be people who do. Um, I've never really. I don't know if they've really examined it. Um, it's it's it can be examined. I mean, there are places and ways to do it. Um, I don't know that anyone has. Um, and it would be. I could not get those numbers right now. Um, there was probably a time when I could, but um, you know, those that time is is not now. I mean, I think that you would probably need, um, uh, you know, basically. Uh, you know, people who examine, you know, when there there are certain cable companies that actually like, you know, have, you know, I mean, they know they know what their customers are watching minute by minute. It's actually in some ways it's it's actually far more accurate than Nielsen numbers. And um, you can, you know, do that crossover and things like that. But, uh, um, you know, you would it have to be a, a, a system that that monitors it that way. And I don't know that anyone's done that. But, um, yeah, you know, that. I mean, I, I think that's the, um, um, you know, the main stuff. There will be working together. There are going to be people laid off in WWE, and, 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 you know, a lot of WWE employees are very scared and and uh, have a right to be. Frank Riddick's already gone. I don't know that that's part of this, but he, in fact, left the day after the merger. So, um, you know, with a $5 million bonus... You know, um, so maybe maybe he just got the money and he's got a lot, a lot of money in WWE stock and just decided that uh, it's time to go home and and retire. Or it could be that he knew what was coming and he's got a lot of money and, you know, and it could be that I don't know that that they, you know, tipped him off, you know, or something. I don't know what it is. But but Frank Riddick, you know, was uh, CFO of WWE, was uh, 
you know, left the day after the merger. Um, well, technically, they announced that he was leaving. Is there through the end of September? They say. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, but uh, the announcement was made and everything like that. Um, but yeah, I know people who were really bracing uh, for you know in that company, and and you know it's it's a different environment. It is very much they're going to cut back on uh, employees on certain expenses. I don't think that they're going to, you know, when it comes to talent, they're going to obviously try to keep the line on salaries about where they are while of course, increasing revenue, uh, to a great degree. They talked about the upcoming, you know, TV negotiations. Um, obviously people know that, that Paul Levesque and Ari Emanuel were, um, Ari Emanuel were, were with Jeff Bezos, you know, the head of Amazon, uh, just over just in the last couple of days, um, the they have basically said that the what they are expecting in their negotiations is to be in line with what the stock market expects. So that would be fifty percent increases in uh, Raw and SmackDown, um, which is you know what what everyone's been expecting that they would be asking for. So um, you know those number you know so it just depends on. Uh, Whatever USA Network does have right of first refusal on Raw and on NXT, so no matter what anybody bids, they can match it legally and keep those shows. Um, obviously, there's a lot of talk that Fox will not exercise that and will and and that they're not long for Fox. But uh, you know, time will tell. The announcements will be made probably pretty soon. Um, you know, I think that uh, you know they've been talking. There's been outside talk and. They've been talking about uh, getting the deal now done and announced relatively soon, you know. You so, so that's uh, been going on, and um, I guess the only other thing of major note was, uh, did you see the Bill Simmons thing of uh, with Test and everything? Oh, when he said they should do an angle with Stephanie and Test, and he had to be alerted that Test had passed well, away Nick, Nick, a while thank ago. God, Nick Khan knew. Well, yeah. Nick Khan knows more than people think, you know, when it comes to that. But yeah, he knew right away that. Uh, that uh, test was, you know, tested, passed away. Could have been if you had the wrong executive there from the outside in WWE who wasn't around and dude wouldn't have known who Andrew Martin is. Could have been a very embarrassing uh, little thing there. It's kind of embarrassing for Bill Simmons, you know, who, um, you know, I mean, again, like he he follows he follows wrestling to a degree, but I guess Andrew Martin's death did not uh, he did not find out about. But uh, you know, Nick Khan was asked a lot about Stephanie. Gave the corporate answer. Asked about Punk, gave the corporate answer. You know, I mean, didn't tip his hand on anything like in that re in that realm. Um, and that's, I don't know, is anything else? That's kind of like uh, the major stuff. Um, but we'll be seeing, I mean, the, you know, we'll be seeing a lot more of um, WWE trying to get cities to bid for at least the the, the big shows. You know, like, uh, well, I mean, the goal is for for all all twelve pay per view shows. But right now, I think the goal is for four or five for next year and. And maybe more as time goes on, and as UFC is doing as well. You know, like the, they just went to Sydney. It was um, sixteen million dollar deal for UFC that the Sydney government paid for three shows, um, and um, Salt Lake City paid big, big, big money to get. That's why Salt Lake City had two shows in, in like about a one year period, and um, that's why you know so many of the UFC shows that are out of the country. I mean, that's why they're not going to Mexico, because they couldn't get anyone. They wanted to go to Mexico. They actually wanted to go to Mexico this weekend. Um, the September 16th show was, at one point, the hope for was to go to Mexico, and um, because they couldn't get any bidders, it's in Vegas. And, uh, you know, that's the way, you know, that's the way it's going to go. You know, I mean, um, the companies are going to make lots and lots and lots of profit. Um, that's that's all lock until unless rights fees collapse, they're both going to be making lots of profits. And uh, you know, I mean, the the Endeavor heads, there was a lot of people uh, years back when they bought UFC and incurred all that debt to buy UFC, who thought that man, they're out of their minds. They overpaid, and um, you know, history has shown that was certainly not the case. Um, I remember when they made the the the, the, um, the uh, ESPN deal, you know, the original one, and it was like, oh, you know, they really wanted, you know, so much more, which wasn't really true. They actually got about what they wanted, but um, you know, and people thinking that that 
you know, that was a, a bad deal. I haven't heard anyone really say this is a bad deal for Endeavor because they've seen what happened with UFC. And, um, you know, I mean, um, I know that the Fertitas, or at least Lorenzo, you know, now wishes that he didn't make the deal because of how valuable UFC has become. But, uh, you know, it's not like he can get it back. So um, this is where we are. And, um, you know, that's... Uh, it's, uh, but yeah, product wise, you know, it's going to be what it's been. Paul Levesque's in charge of creative. Vince can overrule him every week. We'll, re we'll overrule him at times. And, um, you know, that's not going to change as long as Vince is in the picture and Vince is going to be in the picture until he's incapacitated or, or, or something bad happens to him, which hopefully is not anytime soon. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.